draw, paint, or create, see what's inside the art gallery at UWF. 90s nostalgia, music, art, and punk vibes. Break into martial arts. Looking for a club that's relatable? Check this one out. It's debatable. You gotta be kidding me if you haven't heard about this program. Performances, arts, scholarly articles, and discussions about gender, sexuality, and women? Count me in. This woman's handbags are some of my personal favorites. Draw, paint, or create? See what's inside the art gallery at UWF. The exhibition currently at TAG is the Points of Departure Foundations Level Exhibition. And the purpose of this show is to showcase the excellence achieved in our foundation level classes. So intro to drawing, painting, printmaking, photography, ceramics, graphic design, and so on. Uh, many times the works that are done in these classes are never seen. So this gives those students an opportunity to show what they've done, show what we do in those classes, and give them some encouragement to keep pursuing the arts and keep exhibiting their work. So if you're not a student, you'd like to exhibit your work at TAG, we have a professional process in which we accept proposals. And they would submit the proposal to me at nickkrogan at uwf.edu. For students, every year we have a TAG student competition, and it's free for students to enter. You don't even have to be an art major. It's open to anyone on campus who's currently enrolled and they're allowed to submit up to three works with no charge. The different mediums that you would see exhibited at TAG include traditional media, such as drawings with charcoal, pen and ink, um, prismacolor, pastel, paintings in oil and acrylic. We also have traditional ceramic forms, but then we'll also have some, some new media, such as 3D printed sculptures, drawings, and relief prints done on the CNC machine. We also, of course, have traditional photography typically represented, but also new digital processes as well. If you're an aspiring artist or just interested in art, come check out TAG at the University of West Florida, located in Building 82. I'm Erica Dukes, reporting for Argo News. Nineties nostalgia, music, art, and punk vibes. So the goal for 309, um, what we're trying to achieve here is obviously purchase the property and um, keep it as a cultural center um, here in this part of town for punk culture. Um, we're hoping that we'll be able to establish an artist residency here, um, set up a screen printing shop, um, we already have a recording studio here, but that will become a little bit bigger and um, open to the public. We'll do workshops here, zine writing workshops, obviously have an archive as well that um, will be open to the public and that archive will house everything from zines to um, zines to records to just punk history in general, punk ephemera particularly 309 punk or also Pensacola punk. Um, so we have big dreams and big goals, but I think it's achievable. The beautiful thing about the local community is we've just received an outpouring of support. Everybody is really excited about the notion of preserving this house and its history. Um, and so we've gotten a lot of support in terms of backing from the PMA, from the TT Wentworth, um, and also a community of people who don't have a ton of money who've been donating it very generously to our cause. And um, essentially what we need at this point is to raise enough money to buy the house. So it's about money now. If you want to support and help fund the 309 House Project, check out their website at 309punkmuseum.org. I'm Erica Dukes reporting for Argo News. Break into martial arts. Oh, 
The first step of getting into martial arts is finding a style that you f would feel would go good with you. You know, there's you know, there's a whole bunch of different styles. As Tai Chi is more of a soft art, so it's more exercise oriented. Uh, but as uh, Kikido, we are more of a um, less energy self defense martial art. Not very big into the whole you know the the watering crane or whatever they do. But yeah, so the first step would be to do a little bit of research on different types of martial arts and find what would go best with your, or what you see your style would be. Honestly, the most challenging part in general is just getting f through like the first half year because after that it all just become, starts to flow and it's all a bun lot easier. And so the f hardest part in general is just the first six months is like a little awkward bend. You know, you're a child just trying to figure out how to walk and once you get rolling it's a lot easier from there. Yes. Uh, yes, actually. Um, so there's like three different, two different sides to martial arts. There's uh, the physical aspect of it, which always is great, and then there's the uh, philosophical side, because every martial art has uh, teachings behind it, behind their teachings of why they do a certain thing a certain way, and it's all goes back to the homeland of that martial art and how they operated doing things. And so it gives a broader perspective of everything that is. If you're interested in martial arts, check out Escambia Martial Arts on Facebook for their classes and times. I'm Erica Dukes, reporting for Argo News. You gotta be kidding me if you haven't heard about this program. So the policy for the Campus Cats actually is a university policy. It's signed by the president, uh, and it is um, provides guidelines for how we can interact with the cat and um, how we can raise funds for their care. So all of the funds that that we um, that, that go into taking care of the cats are actually donated. Uh, there's no university funding for it, so it's it's um, dependent on donations of, of funds into a foundation account that we now have that's available for students to donate and staff to donate on online. And so our food that we're using is actually a vet grade food, which means that it has probiotics for nutrition. Um, it has the vitamins and minerals that are needed and appropriate to an outdoor cat. Uh, it's low glycemic food too. We have situations now with the good hearts of student and staff that are trying to feed and they're overfeeding or they're feeding improper food or wet food that is high in sugar. We have one cat now that's actually pre-diabetic. And so if a cat fills up just like, you know, a child uh, would that has a sweet tooth, for example, if they fill up on food that's less nutritious, they're not going to be um, as eager to eat the food that is nutritious and that will have a, a better um, outcome for their overall general health. If you want to learn more about the CAT Campus program, check them out on the University of West Florida page. Also, remember, do not feed the cats. I'm Erica Dukes, reporting for Argo News. This woman's handbags are some of my personal favorites. My favorite materials to use is mainly leather. Um, for most of my accessories, I primarily only use leather because I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. I like that at the end it looks like a nice finished product. Whereas if, you know, you use cloth, it's sometimes not as appealing and a lot of times sometimes I'll mix the two together just to make it a little more substantial because when you want like a you know when you have a shoe or a bag you want it to be you want it to hold up you would do lots and lots of sketching lots of sketching and then once you come down to a final decision then you start patterning and deciding on the size of the bag and you pretty much have all the liberty with it and it's kind of great because 
you know, when you're making your own thing, you don't have to go buy somebody else's pattern. You can just make your own and you can make, you know, all kinds of little tweaks. And really it's just about making sure everything is right on the pattern first before you start cutting into your leather and making the bag. So a lot of times what I'll do is after I make my pattern, I'll make a mock-up out of just like a cloth material or, you know, just something kind of cheap and inexpensive um, just for like a test run for all of it. And then once I do that, I make the final product and basically it's just you cut out all your materials, you make sure it's all glued in place correctly, and then the end part is the sewing. If you want to find out more about Lydia's designs, check out her Instagram, BJC3. I'm Erica Dukes, reporting for Argo News.